Welcome back to the channel. Our little Honda CRV is all painted, so let's throw it all back together and take it for a ride. So we'll start by throwing our bumper bracket back in here. Even though we didn't paint the fender, we still had to clear coat it because we blended the back of it. And since you guys enjoyed the music so much last week, I decided I'd throw that in for you. Maybe it'll be our new thing. I mean, it was only supposed to be temporary because it had no audio whatsoever, and I figured that it was better than silence. Turns out you guys are into silent movies, so I'm only doing it now to trigger all the people that were triggered from last week because it was so comical. My favorite was the guy that came back and left multiple comments over the course of like five hours. If you didn't like it the first time, why did you come back? Anyway, back to our CRV. We threw our headlight in here, we're bolting it all in. Found one more bolt in the bottom of the bucket. Forgot that it went down here. So we'll put that in. Now we're gonna change our bumper bracket that we just put on because I grabbed the one that came with our used fender. Turns out there's supposed to be a piece on the bottom of it. That's what that little plastic clip we put in was for. So we'll snap it back in there. And then screw it in. Now that we have the rest of our bracket, we can put this other screw in, so I might not have any leftover screws with this build. We can clip our bumper in with our bumper installation tool. And put our other screw that holds the back of the bumper in. We can plug in our headlight and then clip the harness onto the back of the headlight so it's not dangling in there. We'll push pins in the top of our bumper. And we can put the closeout panel in and put all our push pins in that. Seems like an excessive amount of push pins in that little piece of plastic. We'll put our little piece of trim in the corner here. Just clips in. And then we'll clip our molding into our headlight. Because I don't think I'll have to take our bumper back off again. And we'll put our door handles on. I'm tired of reaching in the door to open it up. So we'll put the gaskets in first. Clip in on each edge. Slide the handle in the front and push it forward to lock it in and make sure it works. We'll put our cap on there so it stays in there and then tighten it up. Click. I don't think that was the 6,000 foot pounds the last guy tightened it to, but it should stay in there anyway. Well, Clip our belt molding in. I'm just going to use the bumper installation tool to make sure it's fully in there. I had it out from before, so we're going to put the base of our door handle in there. We put our latch in earlier so that the door would stay closed. And we don't have to take it out to get this base in there. We just connect the rod that connects to the bottom of it in. Clip it into the back of the door and then tighten up the one screw that goes through the outer panel and holds it into place. Make sure it works. Put our little gaskets in there. Come in on each end. And we can put our handle back in there. Slide it forward, lock it in. And now we're going to put the cover back on our lock that we rebuilt last time. Rekeyed it, rebuilt it. We just had the cover off so you could paint the cover. Just slides in there. And make sure it works. Try our key. And it still works. Yeah, I got something right. back in our fob before we lose it. Put our little plug back in. And we can put our mirror on. I went with an aftermarket mirror because Honda was pretty proud of their mirrors, their OEM mirrors. They wanted somewhat godly amount and the only person more proud of their mirrors than Honda was apparently the salvage yards. So the aftermarket ones were about one tenth of the price. It'll work just fine. We'll bolt it in and we'll plug it in. 
and they were nice enough to give us a long enough harness with that mirror that we could probably plug it in on the passenger side. So we're going to have to clip that into the door, do something with it later. Snap our window sweep in there, and then we're onto the back door to put our belt molding on. We already cleaned off all of our old urethane and put the primer around our pinch weld. So now it's time to put the forbidden icing on. I really need to get an electric gun. The Scott powered one's getting a little worn out. Getting tired of squeezing the handle. We'll go up on the inside at the end so we don't have any leaks. And we're ready to clip our new window in here. This one came with our used quarter. It was a bonus. Managed to save a couple of the clips, so we'll snap those in and it'll hold it in place. It lines it up as well. Don't really have a choice, can't move it around. It goes where it goes. And the fit from the factory isn't the best. The gaps at the top are kind of tight and the trim doesn't line up with the doors on all of them. Close the door and make sure it fits. And then we'll tape it in to hold it in for the clips that didn't make it through the removal process. Now we can toss our lower quarter trim in here. Got a cable up in the front. We got to make sure it doesn't get stuck underneath. And we got to plug in our little dome light back here. Cargo light, whatever. Clip it into the upper quarter trim. Smash it on there with our bumper installation tool. Put the rest of it in in the front. And pull the gasket out that's tucked up underneath it. Now we can throw the screws in that are behind the seat release handle. Just do them in there. Hold our trim on. We'll put our little cover over it. And we'll put our little cargo hook in the back. Just snaps in there. Make sure it works. And we got a little push pin that goes in the bottom. Actually, two of them. They're like rubber plugs, but they hold the bottom of that trim into the floor. And now we're going to go all the way up to the front of the car and put our hood insulation back in there. And back to the other end of the car because I have ADD and can't just put one in together at a time. Clip our sill plate in, across the bottom of the hatch, and then pull our gasket out that's inevitably tucked underneath it. The reason I bounce around when I'm putting it back together isn't just because of ADD. Everything's in a pile, so I'm just grabbing the stuff that's on the top of the pile. And if it doesn't impact the assembly process, I just throw it on the car. The hood insulation can go on at any time, so we threw that on first. The sill plate can go on after, so we're putting that on. We're going to clip this little spacer that covers up the back of our spare tire. I guess you take that out if you put a full size spare in there. And we'll put our little trim piece up in the front. And we're going to make the clean freaks happy. We're going to get rid of all my little paw prints from standing on the spare tire and some of that dust. Just in case somebody gets flat and opens it up and sees what's in there. I don't want them to think I put cars together with dirty parts. We'll put our cargo tray in there. It's got two positions on the bottom now. And you can set it up here on the top so everything's nice and flat. We're going to set it down below. We're going to have to take it out again. We'll put our sill plate in the rear door. Just clip it in with your bumper installation tool. Pull our gasket out, because you know it's stuck in there. Just the edge of it this time. We can bolt our seatbelt to the floor. And dig our cable out from underneath the carpeting. We're going to be looking for that later. Then we can throw our rear seat in here. That's why I put this tray down, just so I had a place to set the seat. I didn't want to go through the doorway and take the chance of scratching our sill plates up or door opening. 
I don't want to make the painting nomad. So now we can pull this piece back out. Get this sets in there. And we can bolt our seat down. Bolt the back of it in first. This thing's pretty awkward. It'd be a lot easier if I had two people. But Mr. Spotty is nowhere to be found and I don't have any friends. Once you get one bolt started, it's not too bad. Move the other foot around. Bolt that side in. And tighten up our other bolt. And we can fold up our seat. Fold up the front. We got it propped up there so we can hook up our cable. Pull it out a little bit, clip it together. A little plastic sleeve slides over it and clips together. There's a little adjustment on there, so we're going to move it so it's fully adjusted. Put our lock in there. And then clip it into the floor. Lock our adjuster in there. Tuck it underneath the carpeting. And let our seat down and drop our prop rod on the floor. We're going to check and make sure our handle works. And it does. We don't want to bolt the front of the seat down and have to take it back out. So make sure our release on our seat works. And now we can bolt the front of the seat in. Just lift up on it a little bit. Start our bolts and then tighten them down. Snap our little caps on there and cover up the feet. Now we put the trim panel back in the front of our cargo area behind our seat. Covers up our seat bolts. We'll put cover over that and bolt down our little cargo hooks that hold everything together. Close the little doors and we're all done. I'll back up to the front of the car because Captain ADD can't stay in one end or the other. We'll clip in our little closeout panel on the fender and then we'll clip in our call screen extension. The back tab slides underneath the fender and then the front clips into that piece we just put in and into the call screen. Now there's some really bright orb up in the sky that's making everything nice and warm. Uh, I'm from Chicago, so I'm not familiar with it. I think they call it the sun. So we're gonna take advantage of it. We park the car outside, let it get nice and warm before we stick on all of our two-sided tape. Make sure that it never comes off again. We got our moldings sitting out here in the sun. These are brand new from Honda. We had to replace the ones on our used door because they were for an EX. This is a touring, so it has a little chrome pieces in them. So we'll pull off the backings for our two sided tape and toss it on the ground for the shop sea turtles. They love plastic. We'll clip in our clips, line everything up, and stick it on the door. Those are not coming off anytime soon. backing off the two sided tape on the front molding. It's nice they give you a little extra. It's easy to find the end. Almost makes it worth the money you have to pay for these moldings. When I was looking for used doors, the touring doors were more expensive. Not necessarily because they happened to be the doors from a touring, uh, just because it was at a different yard. Different yards charge different prices. I looked around for CRV doors, didn't matter if it was LX, EX, or Touring. I found these doors, figured in the price of the new moldings, and they were still the cheapest ones around. The fact that they happened to be the right color, well, at least the rear one was, the front one didn't make it to me in the right color, made it even a better deal. Since we already have our doors apart, we're going to throw some cavity wax in that bottom seam to keep it from rotting out. And if you notice, the bottom of those moldings sticks down about three inches, so you're never going to see the rust from the outside 
but it meant that when these doors were sitting on the end, it kind of folded those moldings over. So they weren't in the best shape, even though they were with the used doors. So I probably could have used them, but it's nice to just put the new ones on and not have to try to straighten them out. After our doors are all waxed, we can start throwing them back together. We're gonna put our door gasket on the front door. Part of it goes back around the front edge, goes behind the door hinges. So we're trying to slide it back there. Now behind the door check and behind the last door hinge. Kind of like weaving it in there. Close the door a little bit, give us a little more room. Now we're going to have to unbolt our door check from the A pillar so that we can sneak the gasket behind it. Just enough room to slip it in there. Clip it into the door. Now we can bolt our door check back in. Put our gasket around the rest of the door. And we'll clip that piece in the front edge. Plug in our speaker. Clip the bottom of it into the door. And put our one bolt in the top. Now we can plug in our little tweeter that goes up in the corner. Snap that into the door. I did take the clip off the old mirror harness and managed to get it onto this one so that I could take up some of that slack from that six feet of wire they gave us with the aftermarket mirror. I've put it off long enough. There's no avoiding it. It's time to play with the gooey fun stuff. We're going to stick our water barrier up here. Hopefully we get it right first try. We don't have to take it apart. Now pull our handle back off of here so we can get our water barrier up underneath it. We just bolted it in so that it wasn't dangling around in there. Now we'll put it back in. Put our plugs in there that hold our water barrier in. And keep sticking it to the door. We gotta run the wiring harness through it. Some engineer hates mechanics. There's no way that you're gonna get that harness through there without getting gooey fun stuff all over the harness, you, the door, and everything else you don't want it on. Our harness is through, now we can stick that barrier up there. Hopefully we've made the biggest mess we're gonna make. Shouldn't get any worse from here. Clip our harness into the door. And tuck the rest of our barrier up there. We're ready to throw our door panel on, but before we do, we gotta change our memory seat button. Because some Neanderthal just ripped a plug out of it instead of unplugging it nicely. But to be fair, it probably wasn't their fault. They didn't have the tiny little fingers required to get the little tabs on electrical connectors on Hondas. So I feel you, buddy. I've wanted to rip it apart many times myself. Luckily our original one was good, so we just screw that in here. No harm done. Now we can plug in that memory seat button and run our wires through for our switches. And we'll be ready to put our door panel up. Line up all the clips. Sure our harness is out of there. And smash our door panel on with our door panel installation tool. We're going to put our one screw in behind the switches, cut off our tag from the salvage yard, and we can plug in our switches. And clip our little switch panel into our door panel. We have to pull our rear door panel off of our rear door. This one was still good, didn't have to buy one. 
lock one screw out of there and a little wiggle and pull. We had already taken the switch out so that we could use the window on our rear door. We'll plug our speaker in. Make sure our window switch wire is where we can get to it. Line up all of our tabs and clip this door panel in. Put our screw in, plug in our switches and snap them in there. Make sure our lock and our handle work. Now we have our car up on the lift. Uh, no, I'm really not that short that I can walk underneath it. We'll put our little push pins in the bottom of the bumper. We just left them out because wow. it was easier to get them in now. And what do you know? We got an empty bucket. So now we're going to cavity wax our rocker. We did the top of it before, and I just waited on this because I knew I'd be putting it up on the lift. And it's a lot easier to do it now. Hondo is nice enough to put a bunch of holes in it for us. So we're going to use them to get our wax in there. And there are a bunch of holes, like 10 of them. There's a couple panels in there. We want to make sure we get on both sides of each panel. A little extra isn't going to hurt. Do the dog leg. Now we can put our little rubber caps back on. Now we can put this little hush panel underneath. Covers up part of the gas tank and part of the floor. I had it out of here just so that they could paint where the clamps went and where I welded. And it's just held in with a bunch of push pins and a couple of bolts and a couple of nuts. Right now I'm looking for where the bolts go. And I found one. So I'll screw one in here. And it looks like another one might go here. Now we can start putting our push pins in. Bolt in our bolts. Now we're gonna put this little bracket underneath there. And I have an extra nut. Not sure where it goes. I found it. And they put a hole in that bracket because they knew I was going to forget it. So I didn't have to take the bracket back off to put it on. Now we're going to put our last molding on here. We'll pull the backing off for our two-sided tape. Flip in the one clip. And stick it on our dog leg. I didn't leave this in the sun to warm it up because it was inside the door and wouldn't really get warm anyway. Besides, if it falls off the door, I'll hold it on anyway. Push all of our two sided tape on real good. There's a screw in the bottom of it that also holds it in, so. I'll put our wheel liner in. And yes, of course, it's carpeted. All of our push pins in. Put our little mud flap in the front, bolt that in. And we'll put the screw that holds that molding in and our wheel liner. Now you put the back half of our wheel opening molding up. The front of it just clips in. And I guess the back of it does clip in too. Just as a different style clip that goes through the bumper. Put the wheel liner in there and then we'll put the one screw in it that holds it in. Push it all the way in so it's nice and tight to the bumper. Now we're up in the front. We're going to put the fender liner in, the rear fender liner anyway. It's got a couple tabs that slide down into the fender. Get those hooks on there. And there's a push pin in the bottom. And one more up at the top.
And now we'll put the actual wheel liner in. This one's plastic with the insulation on the inside where it belongs so it doesn't collect dirt. Although it still is dirty and that's the way I installed it. We have all our push pins in the wheel liner so it's up there. Now we can put our wheel opening molding on. We'll line up the tabs on the front bumper. We'll clip it in. Stay in there. Line up the clips on the fender and clip all those in all the way around. Put our screws in it. Make sure you push in on there to keep that gap nice and tight. And there's a couple more push pins in there. Also holds our edge of our wheel liner in. And one more screw. More screw on the inside of the wheel liner. And we still had some more push pins to put in. More in the bottom here. I'm guessing they put those little holes in the wheel liner so that you can Put your fingers in there to line up the holes. That's what I use them for anyway. We're going to pull our skid plate off the bottom here so we can change the oil. I'm sure that after it's been changed a few times, this will never make it back on there. Hondo is nice enough to put two different kinds of screws in there just to make it complicated. Once we get that out of the way, it's actually pretty easy oil change. Yes, I have my subway gloves on. You know, there's no money in rebuilding cars, so got to work a side job. Well, it's pretty dirty. So once it's drained, we'll throw our plug back in here. And tighten it down to 6,000 foot-pounds. Clean up our mess. Grab our adjustable oil filter wrench slash hammer. Spin our oil filter off of here. Oh no, I got oil on my gloves. I hope whoever orders the next sub wanted oil. Now we're gonna install our Fram filter. Not that I like Fram filters, but even if they cost more, I'm gonna spend it just to annoy the internet that hates Fram filters. And no experts of the internet. You don't need to tell me your stories about why you hate Fram filters because, well, I don't care. Now we're going to put our inconvenient cover back on the bottom. It's got one little plastic tab that it slides into. And it slides underneath the bumper in the front. And we'll put our little locks in here. And we'll put our Phillips screws in here. There's three of those. And the other straight blades that just turn 90 degrees to lock in. Now we can throw our oil back in here. up our mess and screw oil cap back on. Now, back to being a sandwich artist. But first we have to reset our oil light. Everything is done on the screen. Pretty easy. Just select it, clear it, and you're done. All of our dash emojis are off for our airbag and our seat belts. We're ready to go. As soon as I'm done pressing buttons. So our CRV is all done, cleaned up. Not by me, of course. I don't do that kind of thing. Now this should not have been a total. I'm assuming they totaled it just because of the weight on that headliner. It took about three or four weeks for us to get that headliner. So they don't want to pay for a rental car and they'll just total it out. So I'm guessing that's why they totaled it because money wise, it should have been repairable. This thing's still worth quite a bit. Other than our oil change, there wasn't much maintenance work to do on it. It didn't need brakes or tires or anything like that. Well, it only had 14,000 miles on it. Actually, a little over 15. I put some miles on it. So I did have a lot of people ask if this was going to come with a salvage title. And the answer is no. Unless I state otherwise, I never sell things with a salvage title. 
There's no point to fixing it and not getting the rebuilt title on it. That's like running a marathon and stopping at the finish line before crossing it. It makes zero sense. It's a couple hundred dollars and the biggest part is it's a four to six week wait for the title. That's why when you see my videos, the car's usually already done because I get it, I fix it, I send in the paperwork, get my inspection, and after the inspection is done, I have a four to six week wait before I can sell it. And I want the car to be ready to sell when the last video is out. It timed out perfectly and the title came in before the last video was released. Now, during that four to six weeks, time is not being wasted. That's when I put the miles on this thing. Check it out, make sure everything's good and that it's ready to go for the new owner who won't have any problems. So it looks like this build is done, but there's only one way to be absolutely sure. It's time to play everyone's favorite game. You guessed it, what's in my console. We have our typical leftover bolts. Toss it out with the rest of them. See what else is in here. Can't forget our haters tears. We uh, always have a few in there. Hang on to that. What else? Our complimentary tank of fuel that comes with every Honda. That looks like it. It's almost empty. This actually is a pretty sizable console. So if you're looking for a nice low mile Honda CRV for yourself, head over to my website. This one is available and uh, pick it up. Have it in your driveway. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next build. So just an update, that outro was filmed a couple weeks ago and since then the CRV has been sold so it never even made it to my website. One of my previous rebuild customers totaled out their 2013 GMC terrain that I actually rebuilt on YouTube way back eight years ago. As a matter of fact, eight years to the day that they purchased it from me, it was totaled. So this was a perfect replacement for that car.